Our next presenter is one of the best runners the Mozilla has. He won marathons like four or five already in Honolulu. And um, I have to read this, Liverpool, Brighton, Jersey, and as I mentioned before, Honolulu. His plan for this year is to run in London and in Berlin. And if we had till now people that were like furniture sellers or casino dealers, uh, they've had a job previously in bouncing castles. And one cool thing about uh, he, him and his children is that he, they have 100 20 Lego minifigures. I don't want to see a picture of that. So. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to be doing this presentation with Henrik Scoopy. Unfortunately, he's not here because uh, he has uh, sickness in his family, so he's, he's home looking after them. Uh, but I do have a, a substitute. Um, and so this talk is, uh, is the puppet show, and we have uh, this little guy. So until today, this guy didn't have a name, and uh, I'm going to name him Henrik. Um, so there's Henrik. And uh, I also want to thank Henrik for putting together most of these slides. Uh, he's done the majority of the work with this. So. Um, I did joke about I would put on a German accent as well for one of his parts, but <laughs> you don't mean that. OK, so I'm going to talk about automating Firefox using Selenium and a couple of the tools that go along with that, which is uh, the Gecko driver and web driver. So, topics I'll be covering. Uh, browser automation with Selenium. A little bit about what is the Firefox driver, what is the successor from Firefox driver, and then uh, finally I'll be introducing Fox Puppet. So, browser automation with Selenium. So Selenium is a suite of tools for browser automation. It's most commonly used to write tests for web applications. But it's not its only use. It's actually it's an API for controlling browsers. So it simulates a user interacting with a browser, uh, which actually opens up lots of possibilities from things like playing games with the uh, uh, with, uh, with the browser, within the browser, playing musical instruments uh, online. Uh, but yeah, most commonly it's, it's, it's for testing. Uh, it supports all major web browsers, so Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, and Edge. There are multiple clients, each of them provide a web driver API. So the official clients are Python, Java, Ruby, JavaScript, and .NET. Uh, there are also a few uh, unofficial uh, client bindings, such as uh, there's a, f a number of PHP bindings, Perl as well, and others. So an overview of how it works. Um, you have your clients over here. So you have your Java, Python, JavaScript client. These talk to a driver. In majority of browsers, this driver is a binary that's running in your system. That's responsible for launching the browser, forwarding commands to it, and the browser then carries out those, those interactions, those commands. Uh, for Firefox, it's, it's been a little different. Uh, it's actually one of the earlier drivers, and it was built as a Firefox extension. So um, that's why we have the separation here. So Firefox driver is a specific driver for controlling Firefox. And it was built as a Firefox add-on. But when Firefox is launched by Selenium, the add-on is, is installed and enabled. Uh, this add-on is unlisted. It's not on uh, add-ons to Mozilla at all. Uh, and it's also unsigned. And um, the common reason for that is it's a security concern. Effectively, if you have this add-on installed, um, your browser could be controlled by something in your network. Um, it's been maintained by the Selenium community, and Mozilla have never officially supported it um, or contributed to it. So an example of some code that would control Firefox in this case, um, this may not be particularly readable, but let's see. Um, so we import, this is Python, uh, so we import the Firefox class here, we instantiate a, an object we're calling Selenium, and then we're calling the get method here, 
and we're getting the add-ons to visit the org website. Um, then Selenium essentially is locating and interacting with elements. So we're finding an element by its ID, search, and we're still doing dot 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 plus. Um, and so we're searching, essentially, the next one here finds the search button and clicks it. So we're searching for the dot 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 extension. Well, the background thing, I mean, it's, it's fairly out there, but um, it's a screenshot of, of what would uh, be the result of running that code. Um, so unfortunately, or fortunately, it didn't turn out, um, the Firefox driver has been deprecated since Firefox 48. And that's because Firefox 48 will never allow items to be installed unless they are signed. So the Selenium project decided not to sign the, um, the album, which it could have, could have done. Um, fortunately, we have another solution, and uh, a much better one. And that's uh, Marionette and Gecko Driver. So Marionette was first introduced in 2012 for the Firefox OS project, which was our operating system for mobile devices. It is an automation framework for Gecko-based applications. Last time I was in Fosdam, Henrik and I gave a talk about automating Firefox OS, and we were using Marina in that talk. It's now directly built into Firefox and Fennec, Fennec being our Android uh, version of Firefox. And uh, it can control both the Chrome and content space. So typically, Selenium is for interacting with the content space, that is your web applications, websites. Marina has the ability to escape that and go into the Chrome, and that's basically everything else that's in the browser interface. So your tab bar, your URL bar, uh, buttons, etc. Uh, and the method of communication for this is uh, via TCP sockets. Um, Gecko Driver is a proxy for what is the web driver specification. So the web driver specification is something that started, um, the discussion on the spec started in around 2009. It's been co-authored by David Burns and Simon Stewart. David Burns uh, with Mozilla and Simon at the time, I think, uh, was uh, Google. Um, and the idea of the specification is that um, any browser involved in the spec uh, can be coordinated. So the spec is now in, or it's close, I believe within a week it's going to hit a, a candidate recommendation. And the, um, the goal is that this will be a recommendation by the uh, end of this quarter. The huge win we had with this, and we thought that it was the only way in which this, we, we would get this, is by making it a specification, Selenium now has um, uh, been adopted, or the web spec has been adopted by all major uh, browser vendors, which means that the Selenium project itself doesn't need to worry about um, how to interact with and automate all of the browsers. Selenium only really needs to in implement the web driver spec and the browser vendors are providing a compliant driver or browser for that. So it means that we now have uh, support from uh, Apple, from Microsoft, um, and so it's actually the browser vendors doing this. Um, so it's, uh, Gecko Driver is a HTTP API that complies with the spec, and it translates the calls that it receives for use with Marionet. So Marionet is able to automate Firefox or any Gecko based application. Um, and Gecko Driver receives the uh, spec compliant commands, translates them so that they can be um, carried out with Marina. And it's not yet feature complete. So this is partly because the spec is in the late stages of uh, candidate recommendation. There have been some relatively late landing changes, um, so 
this should, this, should, this should be soon. Hopefully soon it should be feature complete. And I believe the Gecko driver may be the first um, complete uh, implementation of the spec. Uh, so this is what the, uh, the diagram changes to, uh, much more consistent. We now have Firefox in amongst all the other browsers, and we just have the driver. So in our case, this is Gecko driver for Firefox, it's Chrome driver for Chrome, it's Safari driver for Safari, et cetera. And those drivers being um, provided by the browser vendors also means that they're responsible for fixing and making sure that there are no regressions. And the other cool thing is there's no test changes necessary. So the Selenium clients on this side will start um, using the web driver specification and the drivers that understand it. Um, so you don't need to change your code to think. So introducing Fox Puppet. So Fox Puppet allows you to interact with Firefox using Selenium. Um, which is kind of what we already said, but here it's actually Firefox itself. Like I said, the um, Marionette can do more than just what Selenium offers. Uh, it allows you to switch into the Chrome context and interact with the, the buttons, the URL bar, etc. And so by extending the uh, web driver spec in Gecko driver, it allows us to do more. So what Fox Puppet is, it's a Python package uh, with a simple API that allows you to locate and interact with the Firefox UI. Uh, it supports the latest Firefox release and pre-releases. And from uh, the next version of uh, extended support release 52, they will also be supported. So the idea is that if you're using Fox Puppet, you should be able to use any of the latest versions of Firefox. Um, and ultimately, it's going to be used to test Firefox itself. Uh, at the moment, it's, it's probably going to be used for testing things like installing add-ons, extensions, um, but uh, we'll be using it for, for Firefox UI. So here's some code which is actually meant to be not very easily readable. Uh, because it's demonstrating how you would um, install an add-on without using Fox Puppet. So things to highlight here is, similar to before, we're getting a web page, we're finding an element. That element happens to be the install button for an extension. Um, and here we're switching the context. So it's with some in the context of Chrome. So anything within this uh, indentation is now going to happen in the Chrome space. And then essentially what we're doing is we're getting a notification. So when you click install an add-on, you get a little door and the notification drops down. You need to click install, and then you get a confirmation. So here we are clicking the install button on that first notification, and then we're finding the next notification, and we're clicking the close button on that. This code wouldn't actually work. It would actually be more verbose. Most likely we would have to have explicit weights here because as soon as you click the install button with the add-on, you don't instantly get this notification. You first want to wait for that to appear, then you can interact with it. Then you've got to wait for the next notification to appear, and you can interact with that. But this is the code with Fox Puppet. So, let's not show the Fox Puppet instance here. Uh, it has a browser property in there, which basically is our initial browser window, and that's all we're using in this demo code. Again, we're using Selenium to open up a, a, a web page. This is what happened in, in content space. We're finding our uh, button to click install. And then these two lines here is, is all that we're doing with Fox Puppet. We're saying browser, wait for the notification. We're specifying the notification that we're expecting, and we're clicking install. We're calling the install method here. Uh, and then after that's done, we're, we're ready for the, uh, the add-on install complete uh, notification. And we're clicking close on that. So here's a short video to show that happening. I've slowed it down, but maybe not enough. Um, so we're clicking this button here. We're waiting for this, and then clicking install. We're waiting for this, and then clicking close. So those are all done by running that last step. Uh, it's okay. I can run it again.
that better? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so that, 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 that's FoxPub then. Uh, at the moment, FoxPub supports uh, simple window management and interacting with notifications. Uh, I saw a pull request this morning that adds some support for the tab bar and tabs. Uh, there's a lot more to add. Um, one of the advantages of building uh, our automation for Firefox itself on Selenium means that um, we take advantage of the wealth of Selenium experience that contributors may have and, uh, and hopefully attract people to help us to write those tests and build up our, our tools, our tests, and our framework. Any questions? I'm not sure how I'm doing for time. <laughs> Yes. Um, does it work headlessly as well, or is it always showing the window? Okay, the question is, does it work headlessly? Uh, no, because you can't run Firefox headlessly. I mean, you can run this, you can run Selenium uh, in Docker, which effectively makes it headless. You can run using uh, XFB on Linux, and that effectively makes it headless. But no, there's no true headless mode for Firefox at this time. Using WebGL? Uh, the question is, do I have an example using WebGL? No, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, would that be a problem? Um, I don't have enough experience with, with WebGL. I mean, with, with, when, it's, when you're talking about Selenium um, and web documents, really you're locating elements in the DOM and interacting with them. So if something, if something doesn't appear as an element in the DOM, it can be quite difficult to do, but not impossible. Um, I've had some experience using Canvas where it has that kind of issue. It's just one element and you can't see what everybody does within that. Uh, the way I've worked around that in the past is to, um, for the application to provide some uh, data that is uh, only really exposed, uh, the intention is only, is only exposed to the test. And we can execute JavaScript, we can get information about the current state of the application, and based on that, we can interact, we can send keyboard um, uh, keys, uh, we can also uh, use the mouse to click. Um, there's also an advanced interactions API um, that um, is not yet complete in Gecko Driver, but will allow much richer uh, mouse interactions as well. Uh, but you need, you need to get some information out of either the DOM or maybe JavaScript, something like that, to, to be able to interact with. Yes? Can you use Fox Puppet to interact with the, the browser solutions like the microphone? Um, so uh, the little, door, little notifications that pop up asking you whether or not you want to share permissions for uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the question was, can you can you use Fox Public to interact with the uh, the permissions notifications in Firefox? Um, I would only say no because at the moment we haven't written uh, regions or objects that represent those. But there is no reason why that wouldn't be possible. And most likely, we would do that as soon as we want to migrate some of our existing tests that, that test that that works. Um, so yeah, it should be fine. OK. Um, yes? Uh, what about um, asynchronous JavaScript execution? Um, is it, yeah, do you have any examples of what that looks like when running through a box puppet? Um, so Selenium has uh, two, two methods for ex Can you repeat the question? Sorry, yes. Uh, the question was about uh, executing asynchronous JavaScript. So Selenium has uh, two methods. Um, the web driver spec uh, has, has two uh, methods. One is execute JavaScript or execute script. The other one is execute asynchronous script. Um, so they're both possible with Selenium. And because they're possible with Selenium, they're therefore possible with anything that builds on top of that. Yes? Uh, how, how would it interact with the uh, cross-site uh, cross uh, request that is, would there be such the same restrictions as the uh, current So the question was how would it deal with cross-site scripting? Yeah. Um, so I believe the cross-site scripting used to be a problem uh, when Selenium was essentially all built on JavaScript. Uh, but now that it's built uh, effectively into the browsers, it's no longer a problem. 
Um, I'm not sure about um, executing script. So, so typically, I find I, I rarely need to do the execute script using Selenium. Because Selenium is, a, it is tools for simulating a user. So if a user can't do it using something that's on the screen, um, there are other ways of doing it, such as executing script, but typically you're, you're then not quite using Selenium for its intended purposes. So typically I would say, um, if, yeah, if a user can't do it, they might better do it with Selenium, uh, there might be issues with that also. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, um, slides are available online. Um, there's some contact details for me and Henrik. So, if anybody has any questions, please get in touch. If anybody's interested in helping us to build out Fox Puppet or to work on migrating our tests to using it, then that would be appreciated. That would be great. Thank you.